buckle the insurance dude it's podcast. Welcome to the Insurance Dudes. On the Preston interview part three, we talk about culture and marketing. Buckle up, it's the Insurance Dudes podcast. Yeah, what was your favorite part of it, Craig? I, I really liked when we touched on, when you touch on culture near the end. So mm-hmm. um, Jason and I have talked about this on a, on a couple of the other previous episodes, um, but but culture is just like monumentally changes how you feel and how you approach your agency. If, if, if culture is dead or there's a str- there's some kind of problem with culture then you don't even want to be here, you know, and, and I've been doing it for 10 years. Um, I've had as many as 12 people and as few as zero and one bad apple blows oh. it right on that culture. And so instilling accountability, uh, ha- having measurable results. So all of the things that you talk about, but, but the culture, man, without that culture, it's, it's what you said, you know, and it's funny because though you, as we talk to lots of agents, it's um, you know, when they come, when you have the guy that's complaining about all of the problems, it's usually, well, you know what? It's the guy in the mirror. It's not yeah. all of them and all of them bouncing because they suck. Right. It's dude, you got to look, take a hard look. And um, I, I've had to do that several times and, and we all do, right. It's part of our, of our journey. Jason just had a, had a big flip on his agency. He got rid of four and, and, and did a reboot. I did it well, last you sold year. Huh? You sold them? No, 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 we, had no. To, we got a staff. Rid of yeah. Staff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, so we, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fairly recently we've both done a reboot with staff and, and you know, it, it changes the game once well, the culture's it, there and you have the buy-in. Yeah. And you learned what you want and what you don't. And it's like, you know, it's crazy too, how much different it is when you're intentional, you know, like so many agency owners, it's like not, it's like, it's a byproduct. It, it just, whatever the culture is, is like, it's a byproduct of what they put into it. Right. It's like, no, you have to actually create it. It's, it's like watering a plant. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's like you hire someone because they have a license. Yeah. Well, Jason- in this world, the world of instant gratification, we, we all want everything to work immediately. And culture yeah. is, is something that it is a long term and, and it's, you know, it's the culture. I mean, and it starts with you. The fish rots from the head or it, or it grows, right? So, Jason, how big is your, how many, how many staff do you have? Right now, two, three, six. Six? Uh, seven tomorrow. Seven <laughs> We're tomorrow. trying to ramp up. Yeah. There you go, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I find it's, there's a lot of correlation too between like dating and staffing. Um, and hopefully you don't mix those worlds that can cause a problem, <laughs> but, That's a, but, yeah. but you know, it's like, it, it's that whole thing when you're talking to your friends and you're like, oh, I went on this date with this chick and she was crazy. It's like, Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. You know, or vice yeah. versa. sure. Women probably have that same conversation. Um, you know, you get to a point where you hang out with your brother, you're like, dude, the seven, the last seven chicks were all crazy. And you're like, Jimmy, I think you might actually just have a problem, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, know. that's it, man. You know, it's like, I know that one of them, maybe two. Oh, you just had a bad luck, bro. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. So that's, true. That's, that's cool. Craig, have you, have you had a chance to dive into it, Jason? The to book? Uh, the book? Yeah. You know, I, I, the branding was huge. Um, I think that not a lot of agents do that, especially in the captive realm. Um, and then, you know, I think that you kind of broke it down how, with the pixels and, and how you can cross use different platforms. And I, I think that if, if more agents kind of like looked into that, it would be something that e- even if they don't use it in their necessarily in their agency, maybe for them, or I mean, a lot of us are entrepreneurs. So, uh, we have a couple different things going on. So sure. hundred percent. You can use a lot of that stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. though it's geared towards an agency. It's there's a ton of ton of nuggets for anybody with any business. Does, does all state have contractual requirements? Like you can't be a realtor, or a loan officer, or any of that. Not a, no. Mm. Or is it, is it like a don't ask? Some gray area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll stay off that subject. Yeah. <laughs> 
we could bleep this. Um, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you guys are both right. I think, and, and, the, and it's, it's kind of interesting because it's like, there's no, it, de- it depends on where people are at. There, there's no right answer, right? Every, every different agent has a different, uh, a different immediate need, you know? And so both of those things are very valid topics. Um, so and I would yeah. say, I would say you're like the best quote ever was uh, for the Thomas Jefferson one. The man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops the clock to save time. Like that's, that's it right there. Yeah. Like a lot of people aren't hmm. looking into even advertising. Like I'm just, I'm going to wait until I have the money to do it. And yeah, but well, and, and so in our done for you agency too, because we do, uh, I don't talk a lot about it, but we actually make way more money off the mortgage industry than we do the insurance industry because good vibe squad, our marketing agency, um, we do a ton of mortgage lead generation. We also offer that as a service to insurance agents uh, to help them connect with loan officers and do the lead generation for them so that they can just focus on uh, turning, turning money. So what we've realized from that process is that, you know, when, when, you're, when you're diving into that, you really have to, it, it, is, it is so crucial to be able to, um, you know, to I, I create that, that presence for yourself and own that market, you know, like the, you were talking about it earlier, like with the, uh, with the pixels and the, and the other platforms, so that's called omnipresence. And so like you, you really have to like create that, that brand awareness because a lot of people look at advertising, you know, like you, you were just referencing that quote. A lot of people look at it like, Oh, I spent a, I spent a hundred dollars. I only made 80. Okay. Well, that's the directly measurable now quantifiable, but if we know that it takes an average of 12 to 16 impressions for somebody to buy a product, okay, well, how many of those did you get through? Because, you know, you can't, it, it compounds, right? And so there's a, there's a brand uh, awareness element where it's like, and I tell people all, this all the time, you, you got to commit to stuff for at least 90 days. Because if you're going to yeah. hire somebody or do it yourself and you're like, I, I did it for 30 days, didn't work. Facebook sucks. Marketing is a sham. YouTube's <laughs> fake. You know, it's, right. like, what? it's yeah. like, you know, 90 days is, and the reason I reference 90 days is the first 30 is you're excited because it's new. The last 30, you're excited because you can see the finish line. But in the, in that middle 30, you're in the mud and you can't see forward. You can't see backwards. You just have to trust the process because you don't yet have the results you want. And so, you know, that's, and that's a minimum. I go as long as you can, because really it's just how, how much mud can you take? Um, right. But, you know, I, I think that there's an element there where it's like, well, your advertising is not just about the directly measurable. I mean, you can't be, you can't be terribly unprofitable, but if you spend a dollar and make a dollar and a penny, that's a good investment. Like I think people come out it. Like it's like, well, if I can't, you know, if I can't spend a dollar and make 10, then I don't want to do it. That's the dumbest thing ever. (laughs) If you can spend a dollar and you'll only lose a penny. You're, you're, you're in the game, man. Right. You're- like you'd be surprised though. I hop on calls like I used to, I, I, we've delegated the sales out, but like I used to hop on calls for people like, well, listen, if you can't help me make five X my spend, then this isn't a good fit. You're right. But it's not because we can't deliver. It's because you have a bad business model because right. if you can, if anywhere else, dude, if you can month over month, get a 500% ROI, does real estate do that? Does the stock market do that? Dude, if you get 8% annual, it's a good year. Right. You want 500% month over month? <laughs> right. Right. Like, let's be realistic about this, you know? And so it's like, if you can get break even or one, like you said, if you can, even if you lose a penny this month, like, dude, if you can get a 1% or more increase in your profit, like, I'll do that all day. I'll take out a loan to do that yeah. because I know I'm going to get that money back and I'm going to build brand awareness. And these people will eventually just be loyal, you know, raving fans. I mean, granted, you have to deliver on the service, but you know, right. It's almost like brand equity. It's like, yeah, you might be spending a dollar. You might only make 10 cents on it now, but over the next five years, if you're continue to do it, that dollar that you spent might be 10 bucks. Yeah. I think the only time I would ever be super like, I I like centric on ROI is if I'm trying to sell something quick, like a quick flip, like, okay, I get it. But like, if you're, if you ask yourself like, no, I plan on doing this for five, 10 years or however long, right. It's like, Mm-hmm. It's been a long game, like, dude, build, build, because then when you go to sell it, brand equity sells for a shit ton, right? Because like, if if everybody knows you in town, like, and that's I don't know how it is in the all state world, but there's a multiplier, you know, it's EBITDA and all that stuff for selling your agency in the independent world. But like, if if you have a name, you have a brand, 
people have bought into not just the price or the policy they bought into like, cause they know you, how do you price that? It's almost priceless, right? You can ask mm-hmm. for things that the market can't because you're not selling a, an agency. A, you're not selling a quote unquote book of business. You're selling a face, a personality, a brand, like a true brand, you know, right. uh, if, if you just had cola, like cola co, right. And it's like this miscellaneous or like we, we have Shasta, which is like a, you know, Safeway Select type thing. Like if you had like this, like nobody cared about it brand, tastes almost the same, it will sell for less than Pepsi or Coca-Cola because they have brand, like you called it brand equity. And so it's like, I always tell people, if you're playing the long game, then play, then actually play the long game. Make your words, your thoughts and your actions in alignment and in, and in integrity and you'll live a good life. Um, so for anybody listening to this, advertising has a lot of different things. Okay. Advertising is a very broad term. Marketing is, is one sector of advertising. And my advice to you is in any advertising you do, it could be organic, it could be paid, it could be whatever. Networking with loan officers is advertising. Okay. If you're doing it right, whatever you're doing in your advertising, make commitments and hell or high water honor those commitments. If you got to give away a Saturday morning or whatever to see that through, then see it through. But also with that, be honest with yourself. If you can't see it for 90 days, then just spend the time with your family or do anything else because you'll mm-hmm. actually enjoy it. If you're not willing to see it for 90 days, then be honest. But if you are, honor it. And what you'll see is through that commitment and, that, and, and you'll, build, you'll build momentum. It won't happen in the first 30 days. The first 30 days, you'll probably lose money or time on whatever you do. You know, it's like you, you, you're going to create a YouTube channel. And you want to be more present. You want to do a video a day. Well, guess how many followers you have when you start a YouTube channel? Zero. Zero. Right. And so it's like, okay, well, you're going to start with zero and then you're going to invite your friends. Now you have 10 and then you're going to do it again by video seven. You have 15 followers, right? It's like, dude, that's the way anything, that's the life, right? Right. A, a tree started with a seed. Yeah. A tree doesn't, I mean, I guess you could technically graft it and not, like if some, <laughs> some nerd's gonna come on and say, well technically um <laughs> but but like you know what i mean like light light any life form starts with a micro thing and it becomes something through being watered getting sunlight you know b- being well positioned and, but mostly it's because the tree stayed where it was right it roots and if you focus on building roots you'll grow a healthy tree and uh and so yeah you know and when the winds come you'll stand tall that's, that's really important. So whatever form of advertising you're doing, whether it's paid, whether it's free, you know, I don't care what it is, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, the platforms will change. The fundamentals are always going to be timeless. So if you stay consistent and you focus on building a brand that people love and can connect with, you will succeed. It's inevitable. Um, so just stay, stay committed and, uh, and invest in yourself, time or money, but you got to put one or the other, ideally both. I love it, man. Mm. Man, th- thank you so much. This is this is just awesome. Just, just yeah, it's of, great. A lot of gold here, a lot of gold. Appreciate your time. I mean, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, we're uh, our I'm, well, dude. I could I could do a filibuster on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question I, well, for you. Yeah. If you guys have questions? Let's go. Like I'm down to do a Q and A. I don't know what you guys want to put into this, but let's let's roll. Yeah. Uh, what's your five to ten year plan? Like you're doing all this. To, okay, so where are you allocating your time? Obviously you know, an agency is more than a full-time job. Uh, well, you have multiple agencies, but like, so where's yeah, your passion? So that's that's where's, so, yeah. I'm actually putting, I'm starting to allocate time because I haven't really put time into my passions. And this is something that my life coach and I talk about. Cause like I've been at a deficit for myself and it's affected my life. Um, I'm, I don't want to say I'm a shell of a human, but like you start to feel it, right? you like, when you're like away from things you love, I love racing cars. I love going fast. I love being on water. I love being in the air. I want to get my pilot's license this year. I want to rebuild my race car and I want to buy a sailboat. Those are things I need. Okay. I fucking want to be on land as little as possible. And if I am on land, I want to be going fast. Okay. So it's like, that's the life I want. And, and those things aren't expensive, right? A used Cessna is like 50 grand or less. A used sailboat is like 20 grand and my race car, I'm probably 10 K away. So it's like, that's not that crazy. It's time that I have to put into those things. So um, those are my goals just to kind of reconnect with some of my passions. Um, but where I spend my time with currently is a lot of delegation. Like I, I try to find like, you know, and this is, this is actually a great lesson for anybody on this call. Um, even if they're just like a CSR in an agency, like, cause that's where it starts. Right? right. Like 
how do I, okay, I want to be like, figure out where you want to be. Cause, and that's going to change by the way, when it, five-year plans are bullshit and not to, I'm not saying that to like sh- shit on your question. No, 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 I get it. Yeah. I'm saying that because my, whatever my five-year plan is today in 2019, Preston in 2024 it does shit that I can't even fathom is reality right now. Right. Right. Like if you would have talked to people 30 years ago and be like, dude, so check this out. I'm going to have a device that's in my hand and I can contact, I can contact anybody in the world through a thing called Twitter or Facebook. They'd be like, dude, what are you taking? And who's your dealer? Right. Yeah. Like it, it, it just was a different world. So it's like, we can't even, we don't even know what we're capable of. And so it's like, from that aspect, it's like, okay, well, let's just talk about the five-year plan because you're going to be way past it if you actually commit to it. So I want to be, you know, in five years, and this isn't where I, I'm going to answer your question literally, but this is just how I get to this. Um, if I want to be at, let's say I want to have a million dollars in, in annual take-home, okay? Mm-hmm. A million dollars. Well, how do I want to do that? I want to do it through, you know, XYZ venture. I I love being an insurance agent or I'm a CSR. I want to own my own agency. Okay. Well, what does that look like? Right? So it's like you start off as the CSR and you go, how do I get my promotion? Right? And, and you don't necessarily stay in the agency forever. You go, how do I get my promotion? If I'm at 15 an hour now, how do I get to 50? Okay. Well, what do I need to learn? And then delegate. Because if I want to be the $50 an hour person, I have to free myself of the $15 an hour tasks. I have to outsource. So it's like, and, and this is whether an employee, and this is, this is where it actually mind effed me. Okay. You do not have to own a business to do this. Have you guys heard of John, uh, a job arbitrage? No. Okay. There's people in the world that will take a job that's remote, right? So like, let's say you're a CEO or CFO, they'll take a job and they'll literally outsource hundred percent of the responsibilities and just take home the difference. <laughs> that's awesome. leverage time leverage yeah. right so they'll literally they'll they'll show up for the interview via zoom or whatever and <laughs> and they'll be like absolutely i'm 100 percent qualified and uh not only am i qualified i have an assistant that helps me take care of all this stuff so we'll make sure that not only do we you know meet the requirements we'll 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 be faster than the requirements we'll be we'll beat every deadline you throw at me okay great you're hired then they go on they find three or four virtual assistants they they compartmentalize the tasks that need to be done they train the they, they do the job enough to record it train it and then delegate it. And then literally, let's say that the job's worth 100000 a year. They spend 40000 in outsourcing to get it done. They take home sixty k. didn't have to do shit. That's, That's literally awesome. a thing. And there's employees that are doing that. So it's like, okay, well, if employees can do that, business owners, sky's the limit. We got no, you know, right. I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, if we set our own limits, it's like, okay, well, if I want to make $100 an hour, what do I need to do to delegate the $15 an hour? Because once I delegate that, I'm going to be at $50 an hour. Well, if I want to be at $100 an hour, I got to delegate the $50 an hour shit. I can't do that anymore because I can't be the person I am at $50 an hour and achieve $100 an hour. I'm going to hit a cap and continue to do this. So we have to release ourselves from that. So it's like, okay, well, I'll give you an example. We have a marketing agency. I hate building ads. You know, it's like, I, I love talking about it and I love strategizing about it. I love finding out what works, but right. I hate doing it twice. Okay. So yeah. it's like, once we figure it out, I'm like, Oh shit, dude, this is gangster. Okay. Have the team do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh, so yeah. that's really what it's about. Right. And so, um, for me, my five-year plan is I want to, I don't know what it looks like, but I want to be able to automate the entire, uh, marketing experience. Um, somehow I want to be able to make it. So I want to put myself out of a job. I want to, I, I want to find a way to make it so that, um, it is so easily accessible for an insurance agent to access the services either through uh, human capital that I organize or through, uh, I, I don't know what it looks like yet, but I want to be able to completely change the way that insurance agents prospect and create relationships with their clients, which includes but not limited to marketing on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the goal. What that looks like, I don't know. And uh, if I want to do that, then obviously I have to take steps to do that. So that's why we have a course, right? And the bigger, re- the biggest reason I have a course is I don't actually care about selling a course. I sell it because I like to get paid. There's that, right? But by having students, it requires me to have, like, I'm accountable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I don't develop new shit, shame on me, first of all, because they're going to get bored and the culture dies. But secondarily, what ends up happening is 
I, I'm like, I feel this personal pressure. I'm like, I have to come up with new ideas because if I don't, then they, then they die in some form or fashion. Right. And so the course keeps me on my toes. And then I take what I learned in the course and then I apply it and are done for you, which then I do for our, our consulting clients. Um, you know, and so, and the people that pay us to do like just the done for you model. Um, and so it, it, it kind of be, creates this like, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and I believe through the done for you model, we'll find a way to put ourselves out of business, but in a, in a way that's profitable, if that makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, the best way to, to learn is to teach, right? They always say that. Yeah. I, and that's why I love lo- live events. Like the last, uh, we threw an event last March and we have another one coming up in May that we're going to be doing, which is going to be just ridiculous. Um, and uh, last May, it was an it was implementation centric and i had agents from all over the nation come out we sold out i only had like 15 spots and all 15 of them like just went like quick and it, it literally it was like 9 it was like two, 3 days i think and it was 9 a.m. to like 9 p.m. and it was like over your shoulder it was me and one of my friends who at the time was a student he's excelled incredibly since then can't even call him a student anymore cuz he's incredible um which his name is Nick Ayers. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who he is, but oh, yeah, he, yep. he runs made you look marketing, incredible, yep. incredible video marketer. If you know, your students should definitely check him out. Um, but he came and he was, uh, at the time I was teaching him a lot about Facebook and how to, how to run ads and stuff. Cause he knew YouTube as a platform, but like the paid advertising side of it, he, he was expanding on it since then. I mean, that was literally a year ago since then. I mean, the growth that that man has experienced has been incredible. I, I love the dude and I'm so proud of watching where he's came from and, and, and what, who he is today. It's fascinating. Um, and, uh, and so him and I were both like literally over the shoulder with these like 15 people, just, just going ham. And it was so cool to see because like the, the event technically ended at five, but I told people there, I was like, listen, I have enough Red Bull to kill a grown man <laughs> and I am not scared to use it. I'm going to stay up as late as all of you need. And we are going to make sure that by the time you go home, you're going to have leads. You will have a system of, of marketing set up for your agency. That's perpetually going to be a, like it's there. And if you need help going forward, if something breaks or if Facebook changes or whatever, I will be there with you. We had, dude, I had 70 year olds that came and before they left, they were getting leads. And, and it was like, dude, when you have that and you know, it's like, do I always want to work nine to nine helping people over the shoulder? I mean, I like the over the shoulder. I also like having some free time and seeing my family. But, you know, it's like, dude, seeing the change that we can make through this is insane. So, you know, I think from the course and the live event, we'll continue to do those. Um, That's cool. I don't know what it'll look like, but if we do it right, um, we'll be able to to make a massive impact. Because there's so many changes in not only in in the platforms, but there's changes in the content space, right? Like. Yeah, I mean, you guys know like how many different course models are there now right who cares like there's an element yeah. where it's like everybody and their mom teaches something now and it's hey, right wrong with that but we're getting yeah. to a point right where there's content overload and it's like now we just need to talk implementation because like i get on calls with people and they go hey i took xyz course what makes you different and it's like well you know of course i have my own secret sauce but i've taken most of the courses out there for the insurance vertical last year i spent at least 50 grand on education that's not including travel. So it's like, I, I, I've taken it all. So, I mean, I, I can tell you almost every course out there has something that'll work. So if it didn't work for you, then I, I, I don't know that my system will work either. I just don't know that you worked. You know, right. Like, yeah. You, right. You could watch a free YouTube video and if you implement it and you have consistency and commitment, you should we'll get fine. it to work. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so that's kind of one of the things it's like, I think the next level is really focus on implementation, not just content because the content doesn't. And, and this is also one of those fine lines. Cause it's like, who am I to tell you how to live your life? If you want to pay me, cause sometimes people, and this is a weird thing. Cause you know, I came from nothing and now I have something and it's like being able to charge somebody $3,000 for something. It's a big deal. Like, you know, when you had helper, not hamburger helper. Right. And it's like, <laughs> people pay me three grand for this. I had to learn. I can't judge other people's wallets by my checkbook. You know what I mean? Like some people will literally give you three grand to just be a part of something. They don't want that. Mm. It was never, if you, if you actually do a deep dive on the wise, 
right? And you go five to seven levels deep on the whys. It was never, ever a part of their plan to actually implement. And that's not what they needed. They needed to be, to be able to go home and tell their spouse, I'm trying, I'm doing something. They wanted to feel fulfilled. And if they can give you $3,000 for peace of mind, it's not my job to make them implement because that's not what right. they want begin with so it's like there that was a learning lesson too it's like as much as i want everybody to implement i can't make them and that doesn't always mean i failed so of course will be big um the the events are huge uh the done for you is really cool um and the and the and the difference there and this is actually good for anybody listening i i relate this back to imagining your agency is a first car. Okay. I don't know what your guys' first cars was like, but mine definitely fit this category. Maybe the window doesn't roll up all the way. Maybe it doesn't roll down all the way. Maybe the heater doesn't turn on or it never turns off or right. It, it, it second gear doesn't work. So there's that whole first to third movement for anybody who still drives manual out here. Um, you know, but it gets you, it, gets, it goes where it needs to go. Right. And, and that's how most agencies are. It, it don't get you where they need to go. They're not perfect. It doesn't have everything it should, but they function. Well, if you reach a point in your life where you go, you know what? I want this thing to drive. To, you know what? Damn it. I want this thing to be OEM spec. Okay. We got a few choices. Do you want to go to a mechanic and just pay them to fix it? Or do you want to go to school to become a mechanic, buy the tools, buy the parts, take the test, pass the test, and then eventually fix the car? Do that. You know, yeah. which... And that's kind of one of the things where it's like, you just have to ask yourself, do I value my time or my money more? And it's kind of an abstract thing because I would almost tell anybody in this, courses don't make much sense unless you want the journey of becoming the mechanic. Mm. Because mechan being a mechanic doesn't pay well usually unless you want to make that your life. Like that's what I did and I made it my life. But you are most people willing to do what I did to get where I'm at? Probably not. So why even yeah. do it? Just pay the mechanic, just pay a mechanic. Right. And so that's kind of the thing is like when you go into marketing too, like whether it's like done for you or I might learn it and do it myself, what's your time worth? And is this something you're passionate about? If you're not just balls to the wall, passionate about it, just pass it off. I mean, it's just like anything else. If you're going to delegate somebody answering your phone, it's just delegate somebody getting your phone to ring. Yeah. That nah, makes sense. So that's kind of five-year plan. I mean, in a nutshell, hopefully that answers that question. That's, uh, that's good, man. Thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Well thought out. No, this is, this is awesome. So um, I do have a 130, so I'm going to have to it. jump. Um, hey, you got to jump, man. This, this sounds but, like we're coming to wrap. Yeah, but, but I, I hope we could get you back. I, I think Jason yeah. probably feels the same way. And, uh, yeah, let's do it, man. Insight. I'm down, man. I have to you guys have are the cool. thinkers. You guys are cool dudes. Uh, however I can help, I'm, I'm, I'm down to help. I mean, I, I, like, I like helping agents, man. So whatever we can do to rock that out, let me know. I'm here. Thank so you. That's, I do too, man. That's why, that's why I'm doing this. I literally don't have a plan <laughs> or any kind of monetary <laughs> thing. This is right. helping form stuff, you know? Like, yeah, it's cool. the clay. So, um, and if we can help some other agents along the way, then that's hey, it. Power to it. So I love it. Yeah. Well, hey. hopefully this helps guys. Um, if there's anything else, you know, if your, if your agents want to connect, uh, you know, if they have questions or whatever, um, they can find me on Facebook. They can just friend me. I try to, I try to, keep it personal cool. um as an advertiser i'm always on there so you know thank you cool, preston man. friggin yeah, awesome thanks man. so much so you guys are awesome. on yeah. yeah it was great chatting guys and make it a great day yeah you all too, right you brother. too bye. see Take ya care, Hey, you've got to check out the Insurance Dudes Inner Circle coming soon where you get extended interviews as well as live coffee talks in our private Facebook group. Join the mailing list today at theinsurancedudespodcast.com. Hey, thanks for checking out the Insurance Dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.